what can I say ever? Put some more points in your disco perception. Because you were wrong. Unless, was it two minutes? I don't think it was two minutes. I don't think so at all. More Disco Elysium, which I am beyond thrilled <laughs> to be playing some more. It was an eternity. I am sorry. Phew, that was loud. <clears throat> and hello, sir. Uh, so... There are plenty of things. Faded is here as well! Catching a live Heaten. What a glorious day. Um... Oh man, we got, we got a lot of stuff ahead of us, right? Let's pull up the tasks list. Sing karaoke, I don't know how to get a tape. Some somebody somewhere. I've I've been to two shops. One of them might be selling a tape that I didn't realize. I still have. So this is the big thing. This skill check to to check out the body without throwing up. I think you're probably allowed to fail it, right? When I first got to it, I was like. Oh, I must have to go get, like, a handkerchief or a gas mask or something, but... It, like... Is it really legendary? Okay. Like, that makes it seem like either, A, you're supposed to, you're supposed to fail it, and then they just let you examine the body anyway, or... Maybe you do have to go find a... nose covering somewhere. Because... Examining the body seems super important. Like, this is a rudimentary thing to do to get started. So I th I think maybe that'll be the first thing that we go do, is just so that I don't feel dumb for not having done it. I'm going to go examine the body and fail and see if it's like, okay, you throw up, but then you still get to examine it. Because <laughs> there's obviously very important information. How good is my skill? Terrible. <laughs> you've wa you've waited long enough. Interesting. I'm getting a plus one because it's Tuesday, I guess. Uh, but yeah, my I'm trying to roll a fourteen, and I have a one. With a plus one, I still need a natural twelve in order to succeed. But I'm going to try. What happens? The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you with from, from within. Alright, I'll just throw up. I probably lose a hit point. Have to be ready to snort some... Magnesium. You feel a great force ringing you from the stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. A total pool of vomit lies under your feet, and your throat stings from the stomach acid. <laughs> the smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. Sorry. It's okay, it happens to everyone. You could have given me the handkerchief beforehand. The hangover is clearly making this worse for me. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think ammonia would help? If you can handle the headache. Some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. But not you? I can't handle the headache. Where do we get ammonia from? That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she... Yes, I do remember that. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the Fritz store nearby. Huh, okay. Oh, but it still doesn't let- okay. All that did was unlock the hint that you should get some ammonia. Very well.
Okay, so now here is our, our second thing that has been finished. Jamai vu, the opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood, only now. That's the feeling you've been having, and for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is the fundamental question. And so that, as long as I... This is the other thing that I realized, is that these seem to have... Was it? I don't know. <laughs> um, it seems like these are things that you equip and then leave equipped. And then I think I even saw the option to forget. So while there are more slots that you can open up, you can also just say, like, I'm going to forget this one so I can replace it with something else. So you get some bonus or penalty while you are researching it. And then once it's done, you get this benefit as long as you have it equipped. I will not falter. Graham Stanley, welcome to the stream. So the only... Oh, you're being sarcastic. Oh, no. I'm also wondering if this... I mean, we'll find out. I wonder if having this one researched and equipped means that I know where my house is so I can go sleep there instead of paying 20 bucks a night. We'll find out. Uh, so the gardener person is now inside there. I will go deal with that in a moment. Oh yeah, what is this? Handkerchief, do you do anything? One corner is adorned with lace and a tiny embroidered portier. Sarcastique. Oh, I can't equip it. This will sell for a pretty penny. An ill advice. Yeah, who would, who would make a postcard of Jamrock? Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi. An ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In thirty-nine, the project fails catastrophe, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Okay, so Jamrock wasn't always terrible. It was only in thirty-nine that it became terrible. I feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin, would it? I'm willing to sin in exchange for cold hard cash, aren't I? Chamay. Okay. Do you have an ammonia? Yeah, there's like an ampule somewhere. <laughs> I want to buy some ammonia. Okay. Don't like overdo it or something. I done did it. This might just be like a, a, you know, plus eight bonus or something. It may be that I'll still fail because my constitution is so low. I wonder if that's also sub. Who are you up there, huh? Who are you up there? And what are you doing? Can't talk to you, obviously. There's some way up there. Okay. Uh, ammonia. Ammonia, ammonia. Where is it? Oh, doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, also nice of them to tell me. Just having it in your inventory is enough.
Oh, was that my name? Well, oh, I'd rather you hadn't told me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, doing my like with this game especially. It's so good to not know things. Um, so I'd, I'd much rather if I, if I ask questions, I'm not actually asking. I'm just talking about out loud. Even if it doesn't affect the game, like to, to kind of put it in perspective. It is really, really pleasant to not know where this game is going. Like, when I was playing, I was playing Outer Wilds a couple months ago, and that is a great game, and it's one that's great to be experienced blind, but within, like, a couple hours of playing the game, I was like, okay, so clearly I, I can see what the end of the game is. The ge end of the game is going to be I'm going to prevent this, this loop that's happening. I have no idea where this is going. I can't even conceive of what would cause the game to end and credits to roll. When I went to sleep, nothing could have... Sp they could have just been, yep, you go to sleep and that's the end of the game. And and the whole game is just, oh, it's a, it's a meditation on how there's so many things that you just can't solve. Or I could have woken up and it could have been Monday again. It could have been like a Groundhog Day thing. So much of, like, what lies ahead of me in this game is just completely a blank. <laughs> Alright, so... It only gives you a plus one? I was expecting a much larger bonus. <laughs> um, that is... Unfortunate. So I guess this means I'm going to... Oh, man. Hmm. I could drink. No, do you drink or do drugs for more, um... More... If I want physique... That's psych. That's physique. Yeah, like, I think what I'll probably do is just, um... I'll try it now. I'll, I'll get drunk and try it now, <laughs> and then if it fails, then I'll try it again later after I have an opportunity to raise that skill. It seems so... No, there's got to be something else I can do. I have the handkerchief. Can I... I, I didn't try equipping it. Can I equip the handkerchief in some way? No. All right. Let's get some booze in me. I never said I was going to be alcohol-free. I was just going to be amphetamine-free. Oops. Oh, it becomes a button right here. <laughs> Take a little morale damage. Never hurt nobody. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That'll give me at least a little bit of a chance. Yes. Yeah, like you wouldn't you wouldn't believe how <laughs> like how how much I've agonized over certain choices and I kind of regret that I did not Oh, what is this? I have a little Oh, that's the duration of the buff. Okay. All right. 17. I'm not liking these odds. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. Darn. Blah. <laughs> Spit and say nothing. You okay, officer? You can pat you on the back. Heavy rhythmic pats. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel and solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. You're facing tough odds. Tough odds here is aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. Why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? This is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a cop. Can't we do something else? I think I want to solve something now. Or do it without me. I just can't keep it down. I'll ask him if he'll do it for me. No, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. 
You need to get your shit together. My shit already is together. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> get my shit together. Thought gained. Volumetric shit compressor. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. Okay, so I'll blame the wind on it. Oh, and I wonder if this is one of the first thoughts that they expect you to get. Who knows? Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Come back and have another go. So, unfortunately, I would have to unequip one of the other ones, I think. Oh, this is a very short one. Your shit is a part, and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together. Compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. So I can't internalize that unless I... Maybe I stop this one for now. For now. Stop it for now. Oh, the 57% doesn't go away. That's good. So what is this picture? <laughs> oh, no! I didn't mean to stop it. I'm doing a bad job. Alright. Uh, other things that I wanted to do. I need to talk to the union guys now. There's a bowl. It's a bowl. There's spit in it, reeking of tobacco. Photos of men in overalls, toting guns, and union placards. Hawthorn bushes outside. It's it's tough because there's I don't know like will having high authority be better or worse? Do I want more empathy? I probably do want more authority, so I'm not gonna equip the clipboard, and it's pretty much the only uh actually maybe my clothes. What do we got here? Electrochemistry. I probably want... I think I'll want authority. Oh, that's not even a separate... Oh, it's these. Hmm. I kind of want drama, too. Maybe I'll just... Okay, no, gl no glasses at all. Reaction speed is fine. Mm. Shivers. Okay. All right. We are prepared. Let's get at this while I'm still drunk. <laughs> this is where you say your bit. A broad-shouldered man points at you with a beer can. I know, uh, again, I, I really don't want any backseating. Um, if that's, if that's a problem, you can just find another stream. <laughs> he and his men carry themselves like giants. You'll need to prove your mettle to be taken Detective. seriously. Hmm? He acknowledges you with a sharp note. He's leaving it to you. Hey. Don't say anything yet. Hey, hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Do not, do not let their squeals disturb your serenity. These are but simple peasants, sire. We'll, we'll, we'll put the, put the heat on by still not saying anything. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? The little guy looks at his mates hey, in disbelief. Asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. Let's give him a hard time. Wow. Mm -hmm. The RCM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them. Reckless. Swinging in the wind. 
Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. How did you know I was from Jamrock? Gave him real nice big dicks. Yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> you might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Don't keep shutting up. No, no, no. He points at himself. Eyes here. You got business with my boys, you got business with me. He understood what you were doing, taking inventory of them. Yeah, you fuck with the Hardy Boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy. Shouts the scrawny rat-faced man. Two teeth missing in front. Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet, says the 40-something man from the corner with a plectrum hanging around from his neck. What is that? Yeah, Dennis, calm down. Nobody's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking man. We don't mind. You notice gang tattoos. The man must be either Mask or Samarizian. Sam... Sara... Saramir... Samar... Sam... Saramarizian. A guitar pick? You're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Titus puts an end to it. Let's see what the cop... What brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty big, good picture of it. Of the actors here. You could take another look at the tracks in the mud on the crime scene. Ha <laughs> ha. Did a good job. I don't want to be a rock star. That's silly. I'm a cop, you idiot. The hanged man in the backyard. Did you do it? So you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. A real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. They couldn't get him down, boss. He's still up there, stinking up the place. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. You're inv Wow, I'm <laughs> going straight to, I know you did it. Uh, you're involved, somehow. I just don't have proof, yet. Well, maybe you should just fuck off, then. Don't worry, we're resourceful. We'll find a good topic for us to discuss. I found something incriminating? Oh, that's a big boy word. No, I don't have anything yet. Alright. Let's leave. I'm gonna go look at the footprints, because that was that was my my shameful failure. That I failed this footprint check. When it's so easy. I think it was easy. Visual calculus, I can boost that too. Whoops. Glasses. Glasses. Let me take the hat off too. And go back to. Yeah. Now we're talking. Counted the Hardy Boys. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The Hardy Boys in the mess hall of the Whirling Rags. Let's go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel, reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth. This is the big dick. Titus Hardy. The one with the ball cap on his head. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even too easy. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with the plectrum around his neck. Three. Hobtailed, hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. The inked banger, perhaps? Standard work boot. Number 45, 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a <laughs> tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. I'm damn good. Another standard work boot, reinforced toes, number 44, same as before, either the musician Eugene or the muscle-bound blonde Glenn. Six, light as air, same make of boot, but number 41, small like a rat, shanky. I should have gotten this earlier, better late than never. The whole world is dark and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. 
Glowing outline of a standard work boot. 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. We're carrying something? Another standard work boot. 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth, Hardy Boy. Seven sets of tracks, right? The lieutenant has been tracking your eye movements. The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. Is that so? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? An aberration. One soul is smoother than the other. Let's name it the odd soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy Boy. I wonder who he was. Or who he is. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer. No, it's not. Forget I said it. We're not looking for a drummer. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Hmm. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yeah, it's prudent. White step. Number 41 shoe. Skinny hardy boy with one with the front teeth missing. The rat-faced one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yes. I'd still be wrong, but I'm probably not. Heavy one. 200. This could be the combined weight of two people. One carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was the fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Fat guy from the booth carrying the, vi the victim. Man, these guys were sloppy. Right? Yeah. I must have had a lot of practice. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It's not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Revishall. Seven days below freezing. The last day, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? Yeah, I saw that just as I was starting. I was like, oh, Marstad's playing Mist. <laughs> Which, if he's still playing it when I'm done here, but I don't think he usually streams that late. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed, they all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. So far, so good. Only one thing missing. He looks at the tracks, face lighting up from the realization. Of course, there were eight tracks, only seven hardy boys. I'm the super cop here. <laughs> Which one is missing, do you think? I'm going to say it was our odd soul. So the odd soul was present at the lynching, but isn't in the mess hall right now. I doubt the Hardys are going to tell us who this person is. For now, it's best if we keep our eyes open. I'm sure our investigation will eventually lead us to the odd soul. Hmm. All right. Well, we got that out of the way. Um, hmm. I could go looking for... I have so many tasks, right? <laughs> oh, the special borscht. That's a relatively new thing that we found out about. Just this morning. Slipping cocaine into the borscht or something. What's that? The tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. I can see through any manner of tomato. Oh, right. Yep, he said he's friends with Manana, the, uh... The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. And he falls silent again. 
What's in that borscht you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his, then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm not. The man looks up at you, then at the soup. His face lightens up. He picks a bottle from the shelf. Borscht need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Of course! Vodka! Now that makes it a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up, and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. This place is a powder keg. Ah, uh, okay, so... Hmm. If we, if we vodka up the borscht, they, they will become more drunk, and perhaps more... loose of tongue. It also means they might fight me. <laughs> More Russian, but I can't do a Russian accent. Ha. I'm going to do one or the other. I'm not going to leave it as is. It's too interesting. Even though it might actually come to absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, no what go. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. The task is completed. Oops. Okay. Crack tooth, thankfully, not hurting at all. Good. Oh, she moved. She's over here now. Um. What do I want to do, though? Talk to her real quick. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging by from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. Of his phones nearby. We have this phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, Mom. Cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine. I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Everything Please all right? Don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. Why isn't the it working? It probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. The manager was vague about it. Why, why would he be vague about the phone problem? This is something to look into later. Ask Gart, maybe. Why did you she need to use the phone? Who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to be back on Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Has your husband gone missing That's before? This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. <laughs> Conceptualiza conceptualization never lets me down. More important than a missing expedition? I don't know, expeditions often lead to something interesting. What is this exposition? There's some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down to the coast, across the water lock, to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The water lock! That was broken. Could this be it? 
What happened to the water lock? Some maniac crashed his motor carriage into it. Sweetie, if it weren't for you, I'd be looking forward to another sleepless night. Thank you both. I didn't forget about it. I just didn't know which direction she was talking about. <laughs> I had to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk, of, funk up that vanilla murder investigation. Vanilla murder is the worst kind of murder. Gets the maximum penalty. If you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired and it's cold out there. Tell me more about morale. How long have you been married? 16th anniversary this autumn. <laughs> Inland Empire is the best. Kind of. It does get me into trouble, doesn't it? Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. How did you meet? Via a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident, and he'd just divorced. We hit it off, and, well, here we are. She's skipping over some important parts. Maybe you'll find out more later. His expression is slightly grumpy. His eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy. Palms are quite coarse, but he's quite gentle. <laughs> if I were to try, what would I look for? He's a bit shorter than you, a bit larger frame, he's longish white hair, uncombed, wild even. Likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds. Okay. Some kind of scientist, a cryptozoologist. It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. That's one opinion, and people are entitled to their opinions. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology, one specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species, called cryptids, is difficult and often thankless, and frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Tell me more about this rare insect. You shouldn't bore me. Do you think Gonta is a boring character? No, I want to hear about it. It's a phasmid, technically. Here comes the interesting. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insulindian coast. Hence the name, the Insulindian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the plasmid with us, officers. We're going to be chasing made-up in <laughs> insects with cryptozoologists. It's not made up, I can assure you. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists don't believe, doubt it exists at all. Does it have cool powers? It can blend in perfectly among the reeds. That's how it's stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. Most insects do. You don't even have to be a stick insect for that. This is valuable. No. Is it dangerous? No. What's so special about it? explain this very well. It is very special. Well, can I explain it better? Okay. Less worried about husband has the green ape pen. Maybe you could... Yes. Tell me about some cool cryptids. Oh, no! You're an enthusiastic idiot, but you're still an idiot. I want to know everything about cryptids. Living cryptids, extinct cryptids, marine cryptids, land cryptids. Bring it on. We don't have time. Let's get back to work. All right. Yeah, that, that is a weird, horrifying picture. <laughs> Bizarre scientific news from Rivershaw West yesterday, today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. 
These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. So that unlocked the white check again. And raised the learning cap to four. And I did just get a skill point. All right, so maybe we'll do this. We'll go try it and then put a point in and then try it again. And then maybe, I don't know if this will work, but I could un unlearn it and then relearn it. Oh yeah, I mean, I already went looking to, for a ghost. Trying to solve the mystery of the curse. Shit compress. Okay, alright, that helps a lot. I don't have any more ammonia. But, okay. As you breathe in the... As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your size, sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh, tattoos, and tendons. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We're deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. And hey, Nogia! Um, look him in the eye. Gross. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. These eyes used to be blue, baby blue. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Talked in your dream? I did have a dream about this. Who are you, dead man? I'm gone. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? killer. A motherfucker and a killer. Where have you gone? Into the wild pale yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. What's happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Go ahead, ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Yeah, give me give me a comical amount of questions. <laughs> Coming up right off copperoonie, Rooney. Rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Is my name Rooney? Rooney. <laughs> Rooney is not who I am. I'm Harry. No, you're not a Harry either. You're a motherfucker. That's who you are. Rooney the motherfucker. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo, I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face, motionless, looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? This case is all I have. I'm all you have? Then you truly lost it all, brother. You let the world drag it all away from you, and what it left, you pissed away. And here we are. I don't hate him. I'm not gonna say that. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. 
Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality, Capolopo. <laughs> Use a couple now, Harry. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus, each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Is this a national pattern? There's no nation I know. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship, but which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. We're missing something here. I agree. A sudden ring fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. <laughs> Takes a thin piece of milled aluminum from his pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? Trigat Sunshine. Mini. Shit, Kuno. What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. Produces two metal-capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I only have two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. Points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. And then... I don't see the stars exactly. Oh, up there? Maybe? I don't know. A sound. A shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest, in case we need it, the lieutenant says, and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. It contains insight into the victim's person. By his build, I would say this is a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We should show it around. Here, a souvenir. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. Don't lose it. How much is it worth? I'll sell it. <laughs> Inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the, to the branch. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength, the kind for tying car cargo to lorries. <laughs> yes, it looks like they used whatever was on hand, paying no attention to not incriminating themselves. Mm, they didn't necessarily... That wasn't necessarily the goal. It might have just been whatever they had. Of course, we're assuming the dock workers from the Harvard. The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. Did you not get a briefing? <laughs> my past has undergone total annihilation. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life, certainly not a briefing. Oh! Okay. Now he will tell me about the case. That's... that's good. <laughs> Did I already have a task that was like... Oh, it was the pissing competition. After we checked out the body, he would tell me about that. All right, we'll get to have lots of conversations with Kim in a moment. How do they even get him up there? The noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Points to the... Do they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch and pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Makes a pulling motion. The shape of the branch supports the theory. It's not merely polyester. It's steel reinforced. He rises to inspect the noose. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting them down much more problematic than I had assumed. Inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. 
Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the deflaying, decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Have you ever played Final Fantasy XIV? It's like that. Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the heel. Fairweather... Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. It draws a line in the condensation. We've requested similar, similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set? Probably four years of wages. <laughs> ka -ching. By ka -ching, do you mean... Let's not log them as evidence. Let's steal them? <laughs> um, I do like money and need money. I do need to pay him back, too. I want to pay him back. It means disciplinary hearing. <laughs> the lieutenant lods. The lods. The lieutenant nods often. It's part of his unplastic expression range, communicating both professionalism and sarcasm. Clearly, he does play Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. <laughs> Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the harbor company. This confirms my own assumptions. I don't think that's quote. Isn't it parentheses? I think it's parentheses, I've heard. Multiple parentheses around something. Initial report. Wait, did he say initial report? He checks his notes. Mr. Garton Platinus. Just something I scraped together for my station. An area report on Martin Ace. It's look pretty advanced for a security guard. His equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Oops. Already said that. What happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. He nods toward Kuno. This is one thing he might actually know. Knock on the boot. It's like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. It sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate. Points to the boots. <laughs> I actually... I, it's been... It's been an eternity, but in college I did have one class where we... Um, where we... I think it was Scheme specific too, right? Because Lisp, Lisp is a couple of different... Like, there's a couple different flavors of Lisp. And I think we specifically used Scheme... Not that I would remember how to. <laughs> Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates divide into smaller plates until there are a hundredth of them all together. Like whorls of floorboards. The design looks organic. Influenced by the highly resistant wood materials. Like lignum vitae, conceptualization also plays Final Fantasy XIV. I've got a whole bunch of lignum vitae lumber in my bags. If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate con interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice... The whorls are in a th the shape of a letter and number combination. E5, E50, 100, 1000. This is a serial number. Can you read it to me? Run the number. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio on my Kanema when we're done with this. Either station can chase it for us. 
I'm gonna pull the boot off. It's probably gross. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Better not even try. <laughs> As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Man, visual calculus is sharp. That's so smart. <laughs> so what's going on over on Mars? We've come to the conclusion that Mist is... Yeah, yeah, I had, I had mentioned that uh, a way back when I was playing it, that it was, like, after I, I was like, I don't know what I'm getting into, and then after playing it a bit, I'm like, this is, this is basically where the escape room genre came from, as you have basically just puzzles that are not even, like, puzzles, but just try to figure out what the creator, what, what the solution to his, like, what did he think the answer was? Whatever it is, that's the answer. Usually mathematical, sometimes not. Oh, and Lisp. I'll check it out later. Right, yeah, Mist, Mist and Riven had no, had no real inventory. The whole, well, escape rooms often have inventory. Hmm. I guess that was more than anything just like a, um technological limitation <laughs> too hard to program having a thing in your hand only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue his fatted hands thighs and his neck just above the noose the rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air his face and hands are pink thighs too i see it his neck too the lividity goes right up his chin we have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. <clears throat> uh, something is coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces is eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at time of death. The fuck he saying? He's talking about shit. We got lucky? Did we? I don't feel lucky. <laughs> I think he's dead. We did it. We solved the case. Figure out if this man is dead or not. Right, that storage... They... Probably a lot of it was done with, with just simple variable, like just flags, basically. Just, did you do this or not? It's a flag that's either on or off, whereas inventory is a little bit more... I mean, it's not complicated, but if you were programming in 1990, then yeah, it was complicated. <laughs> he was upright after death. He points to the belt, especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. Hypostasis supports a hanging. Seems like a lynching to me. Should still get him down before assigning a probable cause of death. Bruises? Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. All right. Oh, this is I can I can talk to him again. And then we're done. How do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Have another look. Just real quick. Two. 